on the 29th of May, 2022, Nottingham Forest are playing Huddersfield Town in the Championship Playoff Final. Just before half-time, Forest's James Garner crosses the ball into the box and Huddersfield's Levi Colwell diverts the ball into his own net. Forest keep the 1-0 lead and win the final, leading them to their return to the Premiership after an absence of 23 years. Fans and players celebrate with joy, while one man can be seen praying to God. This man is Forest's owner, Evangelos Marinakis, and he has finally accomplished his goal after five years at the helm of the club. But who is Marinakis, and why is he so controversial? Evangelos Marinakis is a huge man, encircled almost everywhere he goes by bodyguards clad in black. He's also someone very much used to having his own way. A gallery owner in downtown Athens once told reporters the story of a valuable painting Marinakis wished to purchase from her. She claimed not to have it for sale. Two days later, a group of men stormed the gallery with cups of yoghurt, which they tossed on her. By 2012, 13 years after inheriting a fleet of tankers from his father, Miltiavis Marinakis, who was a ship owner born into a clan of Cretan bell makers, he had taken full ownership of one of Greece's most famous soccer teams, Olympiakos. He began converting Piraeus, the Mediterranean's second largest container port, into a virtual feudal holding. He bought up blocks of its real estate. He sponsored food drives for refugees disembarking at its quays. He adorned its streets with statues of Greek heroes. He put himself forward as the patron of its working class. In May 2014, he won a seat on Pyrrhus' city council. He pushed the investor-friendly agenda of the centre-right New Democracy Party, which became Greece's ruling party after the elections of 2019. A collection of newspapers he purchased in 2017 lauded its leadership. Marinakis is close to the party's president, Greece's Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, and Mitsotakis' sister Dora Bakoyani, the former mayor of Athens and mother of its current mayor. At Bakoyani's wedding in July 1998, Marinakis was the best man. As his clout continued to grow, Marinakis has emerged as a global financier to be reckoned with. In 2017, he bought the historic English soccer club, Nottingham Forest, for £50 million, even as he was under investigation for an Olympian-scale match-fixing scandal back in Greece, which involved an alleged bombing of a local bakery. Marinakis denies any wrongdoing, and the trial surrounding the scandal is still ongoing. Marinakis also made allies in Beijing, which in 2016 acquired the port of Piraeus for a pittance as part of its Belt and Road initiative designed to further loop global trade flows through China. In Washington, he mounted another front of the international charm offense, which culminated in a $1.7 billion merger in 2018 between his tanker fleet and Diamond S Shipping, a concern in which Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross's private equity firm holds a large stake. Overnight, Marinakis presided over one of the largest tanker contingents on earth. Still, the main new hub of Marinakis' sprawling commercial empire is the Persian Gulf. Over the last three years, his fleets have clinched successive tenders to handle transportation for Iraq's new state oil company. Tenders in which Baghdad pays $23,000 per day for every ship it rents for Marinakis to transport its oil around the world. But at just the time all this had been happening, the acquisition of soccer teams and the amassing of armadas and the clinching of lucrative oil contracts, authorities back in Piraeus were investigating Marinakis and three of his associates on claims they set up a criminal organisation that financed the trafficking and sale of narcotics. Marinakis also denies these charges. 
On April the 28th, 2014, a fishing trawler intercepted an oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman, a day after the tanker had left Dubai for Greece. Three men climbed aboard the tanker and spent the night packing hundreds of small sacks of heroin, weighing at least two metric tons in total, into its boxes. After they finished, two of the men sailed back to the coast, and one stayed behind. He carried a handgun and ordered the tanker's crew to keep sailing. By late May, the tanker, which was called the Nur 1, had passed through the Suez Canal. Early on the morning of June the 6th, it nosed into El Avcina, a grimy port just west of Athens. The next afternoon, four Kurdish men in black Mercedes SUVs pulled up in front of a ship, hauled the sacks of heroin out of the Normans' ballasts and began transporting them towards Athens. The Kurds had spent years preparing for the heroine's arrival. They had negotiated to pay more than $20 million for the plaza resort on the Attic Riviera, planning to use the tourist destination as a money laundering site for proceeds from its sale. They had leased a warehouse and an industrial chicken coop in the olive groves near Athens International Airport. Here, the no one's heroine would be diluted with more than 5 tons of marble dust from a quarry on nearby Mount Bendelico. To transport the shipment, they had purchased a forklift and several hundred canvas bags stamped Pakistan White Sugar. In early May, an associate from Belgium had arrived in a cargo truck outfitted with secret compartments. The truck was supposed to move most of the heroin to a port in northwest Greece, then across the Adriatic by ferry to Italy. From there, it would be distributed to the street corners of Belgium and the Netherlands, kicking back hundreds of millions of euros to its owners. All the pieces were in place, in other words, for a latter-day Mediterranean sequel to the French Connection. But as was the fate of that famed heroin transaction, the No One deal quickly unraveled. Four days after the oil tanker reached the port at El Evcina, a figure on the fringe of the operation, unnerved by the idea of trafficking heroin, entered a police station. He explained that somewhere outside Athens, a huge haul of drugs was being prepared for export. The next day, Georgios Katsoulis, the head of the Pyrrhos branch of Greece's Coast Guard, was informed on the basis of this insider's testimony that half a ton was to be found in a small town east of the capital. On June the 11th, Katsoulis sent five of his men to observe the squats in the block warehouse where the heroin was supposed to be held. The next evening, at around 9pm, Katsoulis dispatched 30 armed agents to surround the building. We got some sense of what we were dealing with when the dogs went berserk, Katsoulis said. Normally, they sniff the heroin and move right toward it, but in this case, there was so much heroin, the dogs didn't know where to go. They just started convulsing and barking violently. Inside the warehouse were six Kurds and Greeks, 500 kilograms of uncut heroin and a handgun. Katsuli's team arrested the men without struggle and took them to Pyrrhos. At approximately the same time, another Coast Guard squad raided a mansion in the lush Athenian suburb of Philephi and found another half ton of heroin stacked in its garage. Marinakis was connected as being the owner of the No One ship, and if it is proven out in court, it would mean that one of Greece's most powerful men may have climbed to global prominence on the back of a titanic heroin deal. And if he had been on the ground floor planning for the No One deal, he managed to profit off the No One where so many others lost their fortunes and lives. Approximately 11 witnesses have either been found dead under mysterious circumstances or have gone missing. Marinakis' alleged connection also invited the question of what he may have done over the years to quash evidence of his involvement. Are any of the witnesses to Marinakis and the No One still alive? Asked the leader of a surging populist party in Greece's parliament in November 2019. The same month, a satirical news site ran the headline, 
witnesses are getting themselves killed to frame innocent shipowner. In a Pirios courtroom, over the course of three years and hundreds of hours of testimony and cross-examination, hardly a witness or prosecutor or judge had ever spoken Marinakis's name aloud. But outside the slow-moving legal inquiry into the No One deal, a new, even more damning story was told about Greece. A decade of austerity had just gutted the nation's gross domestic product by a third and wreaked financial havoc on its working class. But its shipping magnates, Marinakis is foremost among them, had just reaped greater profits than ever. The windfall came their way thanks to legalization passed under Greece's 1967-74 military dictatorship that rewarded the country's ship owners with minimal tax rates and thanks to a political class that failed to punish them when, even at the height of the financial crisis, they continued to whisk those earnings offshore. Back to the present day, and Forrest have spent up to £150 million on new players in an attempt to secure their Premier League survival, and the Premier League are set to launch an investigation into Nottingham Forest's owner, Evangelos Marinakis, over the alle- allegations of match-fixing and drug trafficking. Only time will tell what the outcome will be.